Patrick Rothfuss is a New York Times bestseller. What Pat writes makes people think and makes people imagine how the world could be different, uh, makes people think about the consequences of their actions. So in, it seems to me that Patrick Rothfuss, in each and every things he writes, is basically doing philosophy in the best sense of the word. I could not be happier ending up in Stevens Point, you know, uh, for my college education. I knew my teachers. I got to, like, really have room to grow. I wrote for the campus paper. That was huge for me. Um, I learned how to be funny. I learned how to be not funny. Um, I learned how to theoretically meet a deadline, although I did not learn that lesson well. Um, there were so many, so many parts of Stephen Swain. I mean, I was a student here for nine years. The rumor was, and I believed it at the time, was that the 165 credit rule was instituted specifically for Pat Rothfuss. He's so delightfully curious. He just wants to learn things. And so um, it's to be expected that he didn't, he wasn't in a rush to get out the door of the university. What I most remember Patrick for was being very funny. And just a delightful presence. Pat was fun to have in the room. Um, because very smart, very interested, very funny. Over my nine year checkered career as an undergrad, I had so many great professors. Arthur Herman has a special place in my heart for many, many reasons. I took every class he ever taught. Didn't matter what it was. Didn't matter if I didn't know what it was. Mark Plonsky, I followed him into pretty much every class he taught as well. Larry Watson, who taught creative writing and taught the novel writing class where I started The Name of the Wind. Um, and then he was nice enough later, even though he wasn't a fantasy guy, to do independent study with me and kind of field questions that, you know, it must have been just baffling to him, but it, it was so important to me just to have somebody to go to and just panic around, because I had no idea what I was doing with a novel. And he would reassure me about that. He's like, everybody is scared writing a novel, and it was so helpful. He explained to me how he writes his books and the difference between like just throwing a whole bunch of noodles against a wall, kind of science fiction, just lots of changes, and really intelligent speculative fiction, one of those differences is, really intelligent speculative fiction imagines one change, just one, and doesn't just hold up that one change like a bright, shiny object. Like, oh, look, pigs can fly in this world. Isn't that cool? Look at the flying pigs. But rather, imagines and envisions all of the changes that would follow from that one change. His life sort of embodies his principles of speculative fiction. Pat um, contributes a lot to charity with his world builder organization. And all of those sort of exemplify making one change in the world not just in you know imaginative worlds, but in the world that Patrick inhabits, that we both inhabit, that all of us inhabit, making one positive change that has a whole bunch of really neat, unexpected, delightful consequences. I started World Builders, I started my charity just totally by accident. I thought, you know, hey, I've got grown up money for the first time in my life. I'm able to put some into charity and not pauper myself and still eat. Um, so I went on my blog and I said, Heifer is a great charity. Here's why. They educate people. They support women. They build community. They build infrastructure. You know, it's catastrophe proof. It's fascism proof. It's, it's so smart and they've been doing it for 60 years. If you donate, I'll match your donations. And uh, I hope to kind of like double up on like $5,000 I was already planning on donating. So I was kind of you know, looking to work the system a little bit there. And I said, I'll match your donations for a month. And you know, three days later, we'd already raised $5,000. Since then, it's gotten bigger and bigger. At this point, we've raised upwards to $4 million. Um, and it's all thanks to the science fiction fantasy community, people who donate books, publishers chip in, game companies chip in, authors help spread the word and they give us signed books. Um, it's geeks. It's geeks actively working to make the world a better place. I do get the sense that, that Pat has a, a strong loyalty to this community. You know, Pat could live anywhere, really. Um, Patrick Rothfuss chooses to live in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. 
Now, to me, when I say that, that doesn't sound very impressive, because to me, Patrick Rothfuss is, well, Pat. But I know that there are millions of other people across the world who would say, boy, if Patrick Rothfuss lived in my city, I would never want to leave because he is the Patrick Rothfuss. A lot of people say, you know, when are you moving to New York? You know, when are you moving to LA? And I say, you know what the rent is like in New York? I, I mean, I mean, have you, have you tried to drive in LA? Uh, it's nice living in Stevens Point. I mean, I, I like snow, I like the winters, I like Midwesterners, I like our slow speech. Um, you know, this is, this is a great place. It's a great place to live. I loved being able to teach here and I'm so glad that they gave me a chance, especially considering that I was such a train wreck of a student. I mean, I was not a good student, but student by any stretch of the imagination. I got in trouble all the time for like in all of the ways, you know, I did not actually get arrested, but that's just coincidence and timing, you know? Um, so yeah, I miss it. This place is, it's in my bones at this point. There's a reason I came back here to teach. And even now that I don't teach, there's a reason that I stick around. I love it here.